Welcome to a new video and welcome to the review of the Mahendra Pickup Karoo S11 Automatic Special Edition Dawn. Yeah, that's a mouthful. And you get a key like this that you have to actually use. So let's do that and stick it in. There you go. And get this review on the road. Now, as I'm sure you can see, this car is kitted out and it looks like something that can live in a doomsday movie, anything apocalypse wise. Like, this is what you're going to drive and this is what you're going to pick when you need to survive load the car with all your survival gear, drive over zombies and everything like that. That's what this car's purpose is. Um, and just to cut it a little bit shorter, if you're looking for a bucky that you can use on the farm um, to transport the stuff that you need off-road and just to have fun off-roading in, then continue watching. But if you're looking for a bucky of this nature to live with every day, from a day-to-day -day point of view, then this is not going to be the car for you. Now, yes, that might be a harsh reality, but that's what you're watching this review for, okay? Now, there's a lot that this car does well, but there's a lot more that it doesn't do that well, which I'm going to get into. But to start off with, this is powered by a tried and trusted 2.2 liter four-cylinder turbo diesel, putting out 103 kilowatts and 320 newton meters of torque. Now, that's probably one of this car's strongest points is its engine. <laughs> not the suspension is its engine um, that's because it's hard it's tough it's reliable and it's been built to survive India like remember this is Mahindra this is India so there's tough terrains it gets put to the limits out there now for it to come to South Africa and be used here for as many years as it has that's really a good thing so from what I've heard parts and reliability and things like that are actually really good um, I haven't heard too many bad things. I've done a few videos on TikTok and the response to those hasn't been too negative. So that's why I'm thinking that this car's engine is probably going to be one of its highlights. But that's kind of where it's going to end as highlights for this car. Now, yes, some other good things about it is that it's been built to be as tough as nails. So yes, from the outside, you've got Armageddon ready armor. I'm going to call it armor because that's what it looks like. But it's actually just steel off-road bumpers, protective covers underneath the car in the front and at the back. You've got metal side steps. You've also got a pretty handy roof rack up here, which I'll get to a bit later too. But otherwise, it's been built to be tough. It's been built to go off-road. It's been built to survive and drive over anything, and it probably can. Now, as I mentioned, this is a special edition version of the Mahindra Karoo pickup. Now, it's part of four vehicles in the special edition lineup. This being the Dawn, but there's also the Dew, the Storm, and the Dusk. So making four models, and they all kind of look like this. They each have their own specific color. They've all got the off-road bodywork. They've all got the, the steel bumpers and everything like that, as well as the leather seats that come in here. But from a pricing point of view, they start at 628,000 Rand and go up to 643. So you'll be able to get the Dusk or the Dew for 628, with the Dusk coming with a roller shutter. But for 643, you'll get the Storm or the Dawn, with the Dawn getting the cool roof rack that makes it as tall as any building. And they're all powered by the same 2.2 liter engine. Now, to speak a little bit more about the engine, I must say I was quite impressed when I drove it. When I first got the car, um, I drove it from my office all the way to home. And without really doing too much looking into the performance and what the engine actually puts out, I was pleasantly surprised with how much pull and how much instant pull off you get from this car. It's a turbo diesel, so you're going to probably expect a little bit of turbo lag, which it does have a little bit of. But once you get off the mark, it actually drives really, really nicely. Um, the only part where I found the engine was lacking in terms of power and even in combination with the six-speed automatic transmission was on the highway. Now, first, if you see, I put my foot down. It goes off relatively nicely. It's quite loud it's very loud in here actually <laughs> um, which doesn't help because this car comes with also 16 inch alloy wheels but they've got the biggest 
mud specific off-road tires on here that are so gnarly and knobbly that to drive on just an instant road I have to shout because I can't hear anything over the tire roll which isn't great but coming back to the highway driving um, it does have cruise control so that's quite a nifty feature they have in here but on the highway it is very loud um, which I'll try and put a clip here so that you can hear what it sounds like But the one issue that stood out to me was, I mean, it was the combination of obviously the engine and the gearbox, but when cruising, it, I think I was at about 100 k's an hour on the highway at a particular time. Um, it wasn't a very steep uphill, but the car would not change down. So it was sitting at 2000 RPM. There's still a lot of range for it to change at least one gear up for me to get a little bit more speed, but it didn't. It didn't matter how much I put my foot down, I was putting it, putting it, slowing it down, putting it, slowing it down, and it just didn't want to change gears. I thought, I, I honestly, I thought the car was broken, but when it started to level out a bit, it then started to behave a little bit more normally, but I was a little bit taken back by that. You're either going to get this car as something to take off-road and go overlanding in, or you're buying it as a truck or a bucky to use on the farm. Now, to speak a little bit more specifically around that, this car does have the option of four-wheel drive, um, down, uh, sorry. down here you've got the selector to choose between two high, four high or low range um, but it does have an automatic um, differential at the back there so it will automatically sense if a, car, if a wheel is doing a different speed to another one and that's when it's going to lock it up. So you don't have the option to actually physically lock the diffs here, it's going to do it automatically for you. Um, and for a car to be going off-road and overlanding in, I think that's something people would like. But the fact that it's still got an automatic um, sensing locking differential, I think that's okay. But yes, yeah, so as I've said, it's built to go off-road. The suspension is very firm and I'm sure you've been able to pick that up through the video. It's very shaky in here. Uh, but I will say, it's a lot more comfortable than the Hilux. That Hilux suspension is ridiculously firm in there. And it's got no give at the back it's so 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 hard um, but here I do feel it's a lot more comfortable so there's one of the good things about this car is that it's more comfortable than a Hilux in my opinion but it's got all the ground clearance that you need as I've mentioned it's got all the protection all around the car you've got the addition of the roof rack that you can add more luggage and more baggage to the top there um, you've got the rock sliders on the side here too to help protect the side of the car while you are off-roading um, but that roof rack isn't very helpful because it makes the car very, very high. Now, as you can see here, I'm about 1.87 meters tall. I generally stand above every car that I'm next to. Even if it's a little bit, I'm normally a lot higher. But in this car, this thing is so ridiculously high, I couldn't even fit it underneath my electric fence to park it inside the house. It wasn't going to fit in my garage, so it was a very interesting week to spend with this car. <laughs> and then I did also mention that if you're looking for a bucky to live with from a day-to-day -day point of view this is not going to be it now some of the things that kind of aid in me saying that is the, purely also by the fact that the height of the car it's not accessible you can't drive through um, every parking lot you can't go through most entrances um, like I said even at my own house I can't drive it in without having to lift up my electric fence which is not ideal but also there's the suspension, it's very firm, it's very bouncy in here. Um, but a lot of the other reasons as to why it's not very great to live with from a day-to-day -day point of view um, is also because of this infotainment that's here. Now yes, you can see this is a third-party infotainment that Mahindra's using, but it's, it's horrible. Yeah, it's not good at all. It says it's got Apple CarPlay functionality. I've plugged the car, I've plugged my phone in through the front I've plugged my phone in through the cubbyhole connector that it comes with. It still doesn't work. Um, if you use the aircon, it brings up the aircon menu that doesn't ever go away. So you can't use the rest of the functions of the radio because it's consistently there. And while I say that, I'm looking at it on the screen, which is a bit sucky. <laughs> Sorry, this ride's very rough. <laughs> um, but then also speaking of this infotainment chair, for some reason it's constantly warning you that the handbrake is up so if you're sitting parked in park with the handbrake up the warning of the handbrake being up 
is consistently on the infotainment screen. It stays there, always warning you that the handbrake's up, so you can't use your infotainment when you're parked, which is very, very frustrating. And then just to speak about some of the other features or non-features that the car has, in front of the driver, you've just got the standard physical dials um, for your revs as well as your speed, with a little LED or LCD screen in the middle here that tells you your mileage, your fuel, your temperatures, and a trip computer. That's it, or, and what gear you're in. So you can't actually see your fuel consumption. You never know what your fuel consumption is. Um, although Mahindra does say that this car averages 9.3. So that's really all you have to go off of it. The steering wheel has surprisingly got a lot more features than I was expecting it to have. Um, so on the left hand side here, you're able to also just kind of monitor your multimedia, change track, the volume, etc. And then on the right hand side, you're able to control your cruise control. Um, as well as answering the phone, I think, or what is that? Voice activation. Don't know. That button doesn't do anything. <laughs> but yeah, it's very basic in here. It's literally just a 4x4 with an aftermarket infotainment that you would probably want to replace anyway. But you've got electric windows, you've got electric side mirrors, um, you've got a digital climate control. It is not dual zone from what I can see or what I've been able to see here. Um, you've got a cubby hole, which is quite small in the terms of it being a bucky and needing to be quite utilitarian. utilitarian. <laughs> but what's nice is that you do have a full leather interior. Um, they do look like they're just leather covers. They don't look like they're a nice integrated leather seat. But I think that's just nitpicking a little bit here with some contrasting orange stitching for your Karoo badging to know what car you're driving in. Something I do like about the driver's seat is that you do have this captain's chair armrest um, so you can rest your other elbow while this one rests over here on a very hard surface that's not very comfortable and it does give defender vibes because here on the inside it's very narrow like my elbow can't reach out a lot here so it does definitely feel like you're driving a defender but not as bad as a defender. The space in the back seat is what's to be expected from a double cab. It's not very good. Um, this is in my driving position and I've, I think I've been quite conservative with it. And I can't sit comfortably behind the seat over here. My knees are right up against the seat, so I think that might be the case for most people. And there isn't really a lot going on for your passengers in the rear. They do have a center armrest, as well as some cup holders and some air vents from the aircon, but that's about it. But the weird thing is that the cup holders are slanted. So like if you put a drink in there, the drink gonna sit like sideways I don't know what the thinking was behind that one and then if you are going to be buying this to be a workhorse to either go off-roading in to use it on the farm um, to lug heavy things around you can definitely do that so this has got a payload of about a thousand kilograms so this can carry up to a ton at the back um, and you can pull up to about two and a half tons so it's definitely not as much as the others like the likes of the Hilux and the Ranger um, that would be able to tow up to three and a half tons. But I think that this is still, I think it's still pretty commendable off of a 2.2 that's putting out 320 torque. So I don't think that's too bad. And I know that in this particular color, it looks very, very similar to a Land Cruiser, as a lot of people keep saying when they see it. But I don't think that's also a bad thing. And especially now with the price of what the new Land Cruisers are going for, I mean, the inside of this car is going to be pretty much the same as the new Land Cruiser. There's not a lot of functionality up front here. It's probably going to be just as comfortable or not comfortable, except you do get a Toyota infotainment, but otherwise it's the same. It's plastic, it's durable, you've got the same sort of tech or non-tech inside here, but they're asking for like a million rand for the new Land Cruiser. Yes, it's a Toyota. Um, but there's a lot of things to take into consideration for that. Like, if you're wanting that, but you don't have that money, then this is going to be the car for you to choose. And if you're looking to get yourself a Mahindra Karoo pickup or any other Mahindra, then go check one out on changecars.co.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars, but the best thing about them is that they vet and check every single dealership that sells cars on their websites. Not every car can just go and sell cars on their website like those other portals. Here, Change Cars checks and vets every single dealership to make sure that they're of the highest quality, and if they're not, they're not added and they're not going to sell cars on there. And Change Cars' website is a hub for everything automotive. So you can go and watch car reviews, you can read car articles, 
you can pretty much go do anything on changecars.ca.za, including going to see what car you can afford. Now, if you know nothing about cars and what they cost, then you can put all of your information there. They'll tell you what you can afford per month, and they'll also suggest the best car for you to potentially look at at that potential. Oh, sorry, it's the suspension again. <laughs> they'll then recommend what car you can go and buy with that amount per month. I think that's pretty helpful. And another great thing about them is that if you come to them with a written quote from any other dealership that's not on their website, not only will they match the quote, but they'll also beat it. So go and get quotes from anywhere, bring it to change cars, do business with them, and you'll get the highest quality service too. And they're also a proud partner of Greg Dennis Reviews. And then onto the verdict in the form of the GDR test. Should you get the car, should you drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? Now this is two part. So firstly, I would say remove the car from your list of cars that you're looking at if you're looking for something to live with from a day-to-day -day point of view. This is not going to be it. It's too rough. There's not enough technology in here. Um, it's not the easiest to live with. We've come to know certain things in cars these days that we expect to be in here, like certain digital elements, Apple CarPlay that works, and infotainment that's more integrated, uh, that sort of thing. But I would definitely recommend going to take it for a drive. If you're looking for a car that's going to live on the farm, be a workhorse, go off-roading in, overlanding in, then definitely consider this and put it as part of your final list of cars to go look at because it's got everything you need to go off-roading. It's got all the capabilities. Um, it's probably going to last a very long time. Yes, it's all plastic in here, but everything is solid. It's got a very good build quality. So definitely go take it for a drive if you wanted to add it to your cars or to your workhorse collection, but I would definitely remove it from the list of cars if you're looking for something to live with on a day-to-day -day point of view, because this isn't it. But something just to add in here as an honorable mention is that yes, it does look like a Land Cruiser and no one ever forgets to remind me of that when they see a video or a picture or anything like that. Yes, it looks like a Land Cruiser. There's no denying that. But have you seen the price of Land Cruisers lately, especially that new one? It's around a million Rand. And you're pretty much getting the same thing here, except you're not getting a Toyota badge. You might be getting a little bit more power. Um, you're getting the reliability of a Toyota, but I don't think it's going to be very far off from this. So if you're looking at getting yourself a Land Cruiser, but you can't afford the price tag, then I would definitely go look at getting one of these, the Mahindra Karoo pickup. And if you want a special edition, then go check out the Dawn, the Dusk, the Storm, or the Dew. <laughs> I got all four of them. So thanks for watching another Greg Dennis review. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Mahindra pickup Karoo. Um, and if you did, please will you drop a like below. And if you want to see more automotive content and other car reviews just like this, then make sure that you're subscribed. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers from the shaky inside of this car. Yo.